Well, thank you so much for being here. We appreciate you taking the time to come and experience this event with us. Um, of course, you're here for a Dyson event, which means that you're going to get a sneak peek into some incredible new technology today. But I'm going to be accompanied by a very special guest. Um, so I guess before I introduce him, I should introduce myself. <laughs> my name is George and I am the product training manager here at Dyson. Um, so it's my privilege to be able to share this with you and also be in a space together and be face to face, um, which is unique and exciting for us to be together in a space again. So what I'd like to do is I'm going to introduce you to James Shale. Um, and he is an engineer that worked across the latest technology we're going to give you a sneak peek into today. Um, but before I do that, I guess it's always important to preface at Dyson who we are um, and what our mission is. So again, at Dyson we are a global technology <coughs> company um, and we're passionate about developing products um, that really challenge conventional thoughts but solve real, harm, real issues in the home. Um, so in saying that, um, our engineers you know, work relentlessly to pioneer new categories. Um, so gone are the days of us just being known as a vacuum cleaner company. We are this multinational global technology company across multiple different categories. So James Shell, I'll pop him onto the screen for a sec and he'll take you through, I guess, the evolution of our categories over the last 30 years. Check this out. Hi guys, uh, so my name is James, uh, I'm an advice engineer. I've been an engineer of advice for the last five years. Um, I'm currently in Tokyo um, researching you know, how we can make better products for specifically Japanese users, uh, making sure that the quality of our products in uh, Asia are uh, in tip top condition. Um, so, that's a little bit about myself and uh, what I do within Dyson. Um, and now, let me talk to you a little bit about the uh, history of Dyson. Um, so, the experience of our owners is central to everything that we do here at Dyson. Um, really Dyson came about um, out of a frustration from an owner. So James Dyson bought top of the line uh, bag vacuum cleaner and got very frustrated at how quickly it popped and how quickly the performance dropped. Um, so he set about inventing the world's first cyclonic um, vacuum cleaner. Um, so we use cyclones to separate the, uh, the mess from the air um, and this means that we don't lose suction over time. Um, we remain obsessed with problem solving and making things better. So we're, we're frustrated on this too. We don't like things that are too heavy, too inefficient, or too polluting. So we, we try and relentlessly improve, even if it means beating ourselves. So after 20 years after making the kind of first patent in Cyclo, um, we've spent a lot of time and effort making lightweight um, battery packs um, and super lightweight motors so we can kind of make the revolution happen. Um, our focus is on developing better technology and machines which can support healthier, cleaner homes and spaces, improving the well-being and health of our owners. So Dyson spent 10 years developing uh, techniques of aerodynamics and motor development, and we decided to integrate it into a hand dryer created in the Dyson Airway. This revolutionised the way people dry their hands in bathrooms all over the world. Since 2016 in Australia and 2019 in New Zealand, we took a bold jump into the beauty category. Um, now we have a lot of understanding of the fundamental science and technology to go into these types of products, um, but to, to really launch successfully in this industry, we also had to do a lot of testing on real human hair, um, and we set up hair science labs all over the planet. So our first innovation was the Dyson Supersonic, uh, we created a super lightweight motor with the Dyson V9, which enables it to be mounted in the handle, making the product lightweight and well balanced. Um, but another important feature is the intelligent heat control, so it constantly measures the temperature to ensure um, less heat damage when drying hair. Our next innovation in this sector was the Dyson Air App. Um, so the Dyson Air App uses the Coamba effect um, to wrap hair around a series of attachments design in conjunction with the product. Um, and it's a wet to dry styler. Um, so again, it removes the need for excessive heat on style of hair. And our latest innovation is the Dyson Corral. So the Dyson Corral is a cordless uh, battery powered straightener um, with flexible manganese plates, um, which uh, trap the hair to uh, give a better straightener. Having started in a coach house near Bath in the UK, uh, Dyson has consistently grown since it was established in 1993. 
Uh, we now have over 14,000 people globally, including 6,000 engineers and scientists. We are developing new technologies for global teams focused on solid state battery cells, high speed electric motors, vision systems, robotics, machine learning technologies, and even AI investment. Uh, we currently have 10,551 patents pending globally. So we're really passionate about engineering and technology, but we believe our own owners are too. Um, so the Dyson website gives our owners a fantastic chance to really understand the technology within our machines and the differences between our different products and our different SKUs. So people can kind of look at the technology and, and pick the right product for the real world problems that they're having. Um, all without compulsion to or pressure to buy. So we believe in coming directly to the people who made the technology to get the best experience. By going direct, uh, you get the exact information you need rather than the kind of endless shell stack with various paints. Um, and we get our best price quality. There's also limited edition products. But most importantly is uh, Dyson's relationship with you after the point of purchase. Um, so we want our machines to perform well. Um, and so we offer a two-year warranty which covers all parts and labor. And when you buy from Dyson Direct, we automatically register your product so you get the full benefit of that two-year warranty um, as well as some uh, same-day ship delivery. Um, so Dyson, as I said, wants to go far beyond uh, the relationship just at the point of purchase. Uh, so we've kind of been pioneering some uh, new programs, which includes kind of contacting our users with tips and tricks about how to use the machine and, and, and keep it operational for as long as possible. Um, but also some handy notifications like when you might want to replace your filter on one of your PC machines. Um, so talking of PC, uh, let me now talk to you a little bit about the development of that category within Dyson. So at Dyson, we're pretty obsessed with airflow. Uh, we spent 25 years investigating different and better ways to manipulate air. In 2009, we launched our first environmental care ship, uh, AMO1. Um, and in 2016, we launched our first purifier here in Australia. So unlike conventional fans, Dyson machines removed the blades so that it didn't buff it like the competitive products. With air multiplier technology, we can begin to tackle the dust in air as well as the carpet, with the technology helping to project and mix purified air all around the room. Alongside our understanding of airflow, filtration has been at the core of Dyson's machine development. So on the back of that, I guess, journey through how we've continued to really pioneer new categories throughout Dyson, um, it's really perfect that we've landed on environmental care, and which of course the acronym for us is EC, but that encompasses all of Dyson's air purification technology. So the slide that you can see on the screen now is really just in reference to, of course, locally here in Australia. When we launched our purifiers in 2016, awareness in Australia in terms of the effects of poor air quality was really quite low. Um, and what we found, of course, in 2019 and the end of 2019 and early 2020, the bushfires that devastated and you know, plagued Australia um, actually made consumer awareness much higher in terms of um, poor air quality because it was quite visible um, and consumers were becoming more aware of the potential effects that poor air quality can have. Um, so what and, and of course, during that year, how can we forget, you know, we were all unfortunately plagued by a global pandemic due to the COVID-19 uh, COVID pandemic. So this also really amplified awareness for consumers wanting to be conscious of the air that they're breathing in their home environments. So what Dyson actually did to really give back to the community and those directly affected by the bushfires in Australia, we donated over $600,000 worth of environmental care purifiers and floor care products um, to those affected by the bushfires because we know that our technology or our air purification technology in particular uses really high efficiency filters. HEPA filters to capture down to 99.95 of ultrafine particles and a carbon layer that helps remove gases from the air. So we wanted to provide these tools to be able to help um, you know, improve the air quality in the homes of those affected. 
Now with that said, um, this next video that I'm about to play for you um, really is a testament to Dyson's microbiologists and scientists going above and beyond in terms of research in local markets. So we understand that there's higher awareness in other markets, but in Australia in particular, we were fortunate enough to be a part of a global study. So this video will explain it for you, but our engineers developed a special prototype backpack that had air quality sensors in it. So it would be able to track the exposure to air pollution throughout the journey from leaving your home all the way through to what exposure you have in the home in terms of air pollutants. So please take a look at this video. In 2019 and 2020, bushfires swept across Australia. Although the bushfires are over now, it opened my eyes to their quality and just how important it is for us. I am Leah, I'm a mom too, and I've lived in Sydney for the last 10 years. My daughter has asthma, so the air that she breathes in to the essential birds clean for her. This is Dyson's air quality backpack with built in air sensing technology. We've been working on a project to develop a wearable sensor that's monitoring particulate matter and the NO2. We're going to take it with us everywhere we go over the next two days and send all the results back to the UK and see what they say. This morning we've done a huge house work. I'm just down at the bay checking out what the air quality is like around here. Then we should not get a barbecue at home. Hi, I'm Josh from Dyson and I've got your air quality data results. Thank you. From the data, we can see that when you were cleaning, there was an increase in PM2.5. PM2.5 refers to microscopic particles. I honestly thought it would be the spray that would register more. Some cleaning products can expose you to the PACs. However, as you were using low drop sensitive products, the reading was quite low. So as you left the beach, there was an increase in NO2. NO2 is a potentially harmful reaction in these microcombustion. This was a likely result of harm emissions. When traveling, try to offer routes within this traffic. When you were at the beach, the data showed that there was an energy pollution. In the afternoon, there was an increase in both PM2.5 and NO2. This is not very long because we're in a well ventilated area. The effect that air pollution has inside your home really is surprising. When you're looking at something, we suggest using an extractor fan and some pure fire to capture pollutants. It was really reassuring to me as well, using low toxic cleaning products, it really does help. It was also really nice to see the beach, it's nice and clear, air pollution is pretty low there. After these results, we'll be changing some of our behaviours because I now realise just how important air quality is for myself and for my family. So it's just a really great look into really what types of pollutants we're exposed to and this was actually filmed prior to the COVID pandemic. So of course now in the world today, there are really all these new, I guess the new normal, of course all these regulations that we were wearing masks um, and also social distancing protocols. So again, awareness has continued to increase about outdoor air quality, um, but in saying that, you know, we want to understand outdoor air quality and pollutants as best we can but really the effect that we can really have at Dyson is we can help control and create cleaner, healthier home environments indoor. So I guess if we deep dive into understanding a little bit more about the air quality problem, you know, we can't necessarily solve the problems outdoors, but we can take a look at, I guess, um, what the overall air quality problem is and how we can contribute in our homes. Um, so again, these statistics are really representative of how many breaths um, how many liters of breath we take a day? So that's 10,000 liters of breath, breath 10,000 liters of air that we're breathing in every day. And we can breathe, we can take over 30,000 breaths in a single day. And with every single breath that we take, we can breathe in between five and 50 million pollutant particles. So again, it's, 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 it's almost a shock to think that we're not conscious of the air that we're breathing in. It's just as important as the food that we're fueling ourselves with and how we're nourishing our bodies. <coughs> so again, this statistic around 90% is in terms of how much time we spend indoors. Um, and even more so now after the pandemic, other, other countries across the world are spending 100% of their times indoors. And we spent um, you know, a fair bit of time um, spending 100% of our times indoors. And the reason why I mention that is because here in Australia, one in eight Australians suffer from asthma, okay? And that's approximately 2.7 million Australians suffer from asthma. Now, if we bring that into the home, the home actually brings a lot of those outdoor air pollutants in indoors from the windows, but the air inside our home can be up to five times more polluted than the air outdoors. 
And what happens in our home is it ends up becoming a mixed cocktail of all different pollutants um, that end up emitting from multiple different sources in our home. So if we look at the bedroom, for example, you might not necessarily correlate lifting up your doona or your sheet in the morning, but all those dust mites that are in our mattresses and those ultrafine particles that then become airborne, which are often invisible, they're the things that can cause those allergic reactions, itchy eyes, itchy nose, um, and affect your respiratory system in terms of rhinitis. They stay airborne for up to 30 minutes. Then you have obviously the sources in your living room, and that could obviously be any pets. Um, it could also be any new furnishings that you brought into your home, um, just general dust accumulation, and also any existing sources such as a fireplace, or perhaps you have an open plan kitchen and living area where you're cooking using a gas cooktop, but a lot of those gas emissions in there too are uh, being released back into the living space. So again, there are quite a few different contributors that can accumulate and create a problem of air quality in the home. But how do, at Dyson, how do we understand that and how do we, I guess, bucket that in terms of pollution? So the problem with a lot of the pollutants, they're invisible, right? So clearly here we put them under a micron microscope to show you what these pollutants look like um, when we try to make them visible. So to break this down, this is, I guess, the spectrum in which we have determined majority of those pollutants in the home fall under. So PM10 and PM2.5, the acronym for that is particle matter. Now with particle matter, it comes in two different sizes, 10 microns in size and 2.5 microns in size. Both of them encompass things such as dust, pollen, mold spores, bacteria, all those larger particles that can get, all those um, particulate matter that then get captured. And then we have volatile organic compounds for VOC. Now that's really a large spectrum for a lot of chemical um, chemicals and gases that can be um, released into the air through combustion. A lot of common sources in the home that relate to VOC are often cleaning, um, cleaning agents. You can find volatile organic compounds in candles. Um, again, in a lot of um, personal care products you know, that we're using every single day in our home, these can emit volatile organic compounds back into the room. And then of course NO2, which is really gaseous substances and also um, if you live somewhere close to a highway, you'll be exposed to a lot more exhaust emissions. And in turn, if you have an, uh, a garage attached to your home where you access your home from the garage, you could be releasing harmful um, emissions back into your home by doing so. So again, that is, I guess, the spectrum of which we identified. But what our engineers have continued to build on in terms of their research is that they have identified a particular pollutant that in fact sits above all of these in terms of potential health effects, but also something that's very difficult to capture, and that is formaldehyde. Now, may I ask a question? Um, this obviously picture represents someone doing a fair bit of DIY work or renovations in their space, whether it be in your home or your workspace. Now, has anyone in this room, uh, I guess, uh, put your hand up if you have done any DIY or renovations to your home in the last 12 months? Yes, so, so majority of us, right? And that's from you know, putting together a flat pack to painting or doing major renovations. The reason why we call that out is because formaldehyde is actually an odorless gas. And this odorless gas or this chemical actually sits, um, it will actually is incorporated into a lot of new furnishings that we purchase, right? Formaldehyde is almost a preservative and it is used on a lot of uh, flat pack flooring or new flooring or furniture rugs, anything that you can really correlate. So what is it now? Oh, I can tell you, oh, it's, it is, yeah, that's, that is, but you know what's interesting? A lot of people correlate that directly to formaldehyde. So it's like, wait, why is that in my home? Um, and again, it is a preservative and it's a harmful <coughs> chemical. So it's found in your furnishings, your floorings, in paints. Um, and uh, interesting statistic behind that, in other countries where they have more awareness, China, for example, um, where a lot of the pollution is actually visible, for ma um, a lot of uh, people in their home when they do renovations, they will actually put purifiers in their home for weeks before they actually move in to remove as much of that high concentration of formaldehyde as possible. Because when we look at formaldehyde under a microscope, we capture pollutants down to 0.1 microns. So for context, that's the strand of one single hair. But formaldehyde is actually 500 times smaller than 0.1 microns. So a lot of the time, if it's not merged itself with other pollutants to be captured, it can often escape through other, other machines 
and emit back into your room. The other problem with formaldehyde, it's a volatile organic compound, but the uniqueness of it is it can continue to off gas for years and years and years into your room. So that new lounge that you purchase, that new uh, you know, furniture set, that new buffet that you bought for your living room, that can continue to off gas formaldehyde for years in your home. And we know that adverse exposure or e extreme exposure to formaldehyde can uh, have some really impactful health risks. Um, in addition to just allergic reactions, really high exposures um, can have um, more serious health impacts um, for prolonged exposure. So I guess, what, what, is, what is that leading into? Why are you here today? And why are we highlighting this as kind of the problem in terms of air quality? Um, I'm gonna hand you over to James, who's now gonna really introduce what the latest and greatest technology is to help solve this problem in a real home environment. Over to you, James. Cool. So thank you very much, George, and thank you for talking us through some of the real-world problems uh, created by air pollution. So it gives me great pleasure today to give you a sneak peek into our latest pioneering technology. And hopefully, with this technology, uh, we can give users peace of mind when it comes to air quality in both uh, work and, and home. Uh, so George, if you can do me a favour and do the product reveal. Hey! <laughs> so the new Dyson Purifier range, uh, you can see that, that George has just unveiled, uh, is Dyson's best purifier technology. Um, it captures ultra-fine dust and allergens. It can remove 99.95% of particles, even as small as 0.5 um, And now even destroys formaldehyde continuously. So we have a new patented technology, uh, which is a solid-state formaldehyde sensitive technology. Um, and this enables us to continuously destroy formaldehyde uh, in, in the product through the lifetime of the machine. The whole machine is sealed to a HEPA H13 standard. Uh, and as I previously mentioned, this enables it to remove 99.95% of particles as small as 0.1 microns. Um, so now I'm going to take you through each of the different areas of the machine. Um, so there's sensing, there's capture, and then there's projection. And I'm going to talk you through some of the technologies in more detail. So the first area I'd like to talk to you about today is sensing. Um, before we can remove the particles from the air, first we need to know um, what the air quality is like in the house. Um, so the Dyson machine has a series of sensors. It has a particulate sensor, which is great for detecting PM2.5 um, and PM10. It has AC sensors uh, that are used to detect uh, things like NO2 and VOCs. Um, and Dyson has developed a unique algorithm uh, for dust concentration readings. Now this has been verified by experts in London and Beijing to correlate with statistics data for air quality measurement stations used to report gravity levels. Um, but Dyson's new purifier also has a solid state formaldehyde sensor. Um, so this also uses an intelligent algorithm so that it doesn't force trigger formaldehyde readings uh, when it's picking up other gases like VOCs. Now this new sensor can last a lifetime. Um, so other, tech, other companies use what's called a, a gel-based formaldehyde sensor. We've added something called a solid-state formaldehyde sensor, which means the gel doesn't dry out. Um, we see that when the gel dries out on uh, gel-based sensors, you can get very inaccurate readings. So um, the purifier is capable of reporting on the screen the formaldehyde levels and your air quality levels, as well, along with like the temperature and the humidity. Um, but we have the Dyson Link app. Um, now, if you connect your product with the Dyson Link app, you can control it remotely um, and you can also view the kind of historic air pollution data um, in your home over time as well, which is, is, is an interesting read. Um, so now I'm going to show you a little video about our testing done in relation to there are hundreds of different chemicals in the air, but one of the ones we want to do something about, in particular, is formaldehyde. It's made up of some really simple molecules that we've all heard of, but when combined together, it's actually quite a harmful pollutant. This space represents a standard bedroom. We've got a double bed in the middle here, a couple of side tables, and we stood on some, some lovely uh, wooden flooring. And all of these things are missing. 
Indoor air quality is incredibly complex problem to understand. Over 30 years, we've been relentlessly pursuing our understanding of that and it continues to grow every single day. So, other sensors, such as this one here, are gel based. What that means is the minute they're manufactured, they start to dry out. And over time, the numbers they start feeding back to become inaccurate. This orange here absolutely does not have any flammable in it whatsoever, but this sensor will tell you that it does. Our sensor uses a solid state system that's continuously monitoring what's happening in the area. But it's not enough to know what just happened, we need to do something about it. Inside this, we have material that's been coated with a catalytic substance. It's based on a material from Cook's Mayo, and so at an atomic level, as in really tiny tunnels, which are perfectly shaped in size to allow the flower to pass through. But as it's passing through, manganese in the filter breaks down that flower pipe into the carbon dioxide water, which is hot. So our formaldehyde filter doesn't just capture the flower pipe, but it actually destroys it, which is much more important. So before we move on to the next piece, piece of technology, I just want to reassure you that we're going to have an opportunity post the presentation to actually experience some of the technology and I'll take you through some demonstrations to really um, showcase the effectiveness of this brand new sensor and the sensor technology and how it reacts. So the second key piece of technology I'll pass you over to James to talk through is really all about capturing. Now he's going to reinforce some of the things you've just heard in that video, but it's really great to hear from James. Um, in terms of someone who actually was a part of the development of the product. So I'll pass you back over to James and he'll share some more information about how we capture pollutants in this new filter system. Hi, sure, come George. So we <laughs> talked earlier about sensing, which is the first area. Um, but once you've detected the uh, particles, the next uh, objective is to capture them. Um, so different pollutants in the air require different filtration technologies to remove them. Um, so, we have the HEPA filter, which is on the most outside of, of the product. So this um, contains heated HEPA material. And this is really effective at capturing particular matter. Um, so your PM10, PM2.5, all the way down to kind of 0 0.1 microns. Um, next we have the carbon filters, so they have um, granulated carbon in. Um, and these are really effective at uh, saturating the VOC and NO2 gases, which are particularly nasty um, gases um, uh, elements that are found within homes. Um, and lastly, is a green really argument innovation, which is our selective catalytic oxidization filter. Um, so that's on the innermost of the product. Now, formaldehyde is 500 times smaller than 0.1 microns, so it's particularly difficult to capture. Um, and also it's one of the most harmful if, if you suffer from long exposure to it. So basically the catalytic, uh, the catalytic filter that we've created has tiny, tiny holes that can specifically fit malahide at a tip. And then we use a catalytic process, much like the catalytic converter of the exhaust of your car, um, to break down the formaldehyde particle into tiny amounts of water vapor and CO2. Um, and one of the, the most interesting parts of uh, this process is the oxygen actually uh, regenerates uh, the catalytic surface, um, meaning that you never have to replace this filter. Um, so in addition to our three filters that we have, um, I mentioned earlier that we um, really concentrate on sealing the machine so that it could form to a HEPA H13 standard. And you can only really do this by um, making sure that the sealing in between the filters and the different areas of the product um, is done really well. So HEPA 13 is really the kind of standard filtration and is the kind of holy grail of purification and, and this machine appears to that. Um, so that's become particularly um, important um, you know, following the kind of COVID-19 pandemic, um, people are a lot more interested in, you know, really effective filtration um, and the Dyson product could really help where um, perhaps we haven't got the best HVAC systems built into the, the building um, or the environment that we're living in or operating. Um, so that's uh, a little bit about how we capture the pollutants in the machine. 
exchange. So what I'll do now is just focus your attention. I'm gonna actually take the filters out to show you how quick and easy it is to access them and have a look at those seals. But in terms of, um, I guess, the machine being completely sealed to that HEPA 13 standard, this next film is actually a, a smoke box demonstration. And the actual orange smoke dust particles they put in there um, is actually something that really puts purifiers through their paces in terms of testing them, whether they're able to leak pollution back into the air. So I'm going to let this smoke box fill up, but as it does, this is in real time, so it's not being time-lapsed. So as quick as that box um, starts to clear through, I'm just going to walk over here and just pay attention. You've seen the box fill up. You can see the top of the half of the loop. You'll see no orange smoke emitting from there, but I don't want you to have to watch it the whole time for the real time. So over here, this is how quick and easy it is to remove the filters. By the time we're done, that box should be completely clear. So it's super quick and easy to change filters on a Dyson machine. On either side, there are two twist locks here. We literally just push the cage down and both halves of the filter set are able to be removed from the cage. In here, of course, is your new um, catalytic oxidization filter. This stays fixed to the machine for the lifetime of the machine. Again, it doesn't need to be replaced, which is fantastic. But then our engineers have just really um, wanted to build on the ethos of lean engineering and sustainability. And when you remove the outer cage, it exposes the new combination filter. So this is the HEPA filter on the outside. And on the inside is the carbon filter. Our previous generation was two halves. So you'd have the HEPA layer, and then you had a separate carbon filter. Now it's been merged into one, and it's being developed at 25%. Um, it's, it's actually made out of 25% recycled materials, um, which is an incredible feat for the engineers. So they've done that, and then literally it's a simple when you replace your filters. If you're using any Dyson purifier every single day for 12 hours a day, you'd be replacing this filter once a year, or adversely now, with more awareness increasing, most people will be running their purifiers 24 hours a day. So in turn, that would be replacing them roughly every six months. And we make it super easy to attach. There's no front, left, back, right. This clip, that clip, it's literally, you can either put the front cage on, the back cage on, and it simply just locks into place. And that's how quick and easy it is to change the filter on your Dyson machine. Yes. Yeah, so uh, yes. No, it's not. So the formaldehyde filter was just the exclusive <coughs> to fit into no, I'm sorry, uh, formaldehyde. Uh, the combination filters. Yeah. Um, at this stage, no, they won't be available for the separate machines. We'll still have the separate carbon layer. Um, so yeah, you can see the smoke box is completely cleared out, but it's a testament to the seals on our filters, but also in the next part that James is going to talk through, to achieve that HEPA standard filtration, engineers had to look at some critical seal points. So James will just explain how we achieved that. So, thank you, George. I really love that demonstration uh, because I think it shows just how effective the machine is uh, uh, capturing all of the particles and have got leaking um, through different assemblies. Um, so how do we achieve this? Um, well, the nice engineers really took a forensic approach to ensuring that the whole machine is sealed. Um, so we identified 24 critical points in the machine uh, between the various assemblies, so it might be between the different filters or between the filters and the motor, um, and really ensure uh, high precision of sealing in those 24 areas. Um, so this gives us a seal filtration system, which means our purifier meets the HEPA H13 standard. Which is an incredible feat um, in terms of really wanting to make a purifier be completely sealed. So in context of our previous generation, where you had the filters completely sealed, now every single component is sealed off in the product, which is incredible. So to the last piece of key tech, um, there's two more videos from James to come, very brief, but it's gonna be perfectly in line to our third key piece of technology to get advanced purification, and that's really all about how we project the air around the room. So over to James to share a little bit more about that. Um, so the final area I'm going to talk through, after we've detected the filters and, uh, and we've removed them, um, it's important to talk about how we project this purified stream of air. Um, so our third area of focus for today is projection. So uh, you may have heard me say uh, before in this presentation that Dyson were absolutely obsessed with air flow. Right? And spent 25 years really kind of understanding it, but we have to manipulate air. Um, so the first innovation that really uh, is featured on this product is the Dyson Air Multiplier technology. So essentially this works like a hydro on an airplane wing. Um, and 
this enables us to kind of take that purified air um, and intensify the speed which is projected out of the amp of the product. Um, we've also integrated 350 degree oscillation, so you can really kind of target all of the air and mix that purified air into your environment. Um, so it's a further kind of uh, generate this, this stream of air and air mixing in the room. Uh, we've created 10 different fan speeds um, that kind of adapt to you in your life. 10 is obviously the most powerful, where the, the motor spins the fastest, and you'll project the largest volume of purified air around the room. But there's also lower uh, fan speed settings if you want a kind of quiet performance, or if you have an environment that you're not so worried about the air quality in. Um, additionally, what we've done is we've created a diffuser mode. Um, so when the diffuser mode comes in, the airflow is diverted through the back of the amp, so you don't get kind of strong airflow. Now this is going to be perfect when you want to purify your room, but you don't want a strong stream of air um, blowing at you while you're in the room. Um, so proper ventilation involves exchanging indoor and outdoor air. But using the kind of technologies that I've just mentioned, um, what the Dyson does is kind of moves air around the room and, and projects the clean purified air, which kind of stops the air from staying. Um, so where outdoor air is polluted, uh, um, what a HVAC system I use in spaces, uh, the Dyson uh, purifier can also work in conjunction with this. So it's going to uh, work in conjunction with any air filtration system have a environment. Well, uh, because of this projector technology that I just walked you through. Um, so that is projection. Um, hopefully that gives you a nice understanding into our new pioneering technology. Um, and I'm with fire range. Thanks, James. So I'm just going to move over here to actually give you a visual demonstration of some of the features that James just talked about. So those of you, may I ask, um, hands up if you've owned a Dyson Purifier, or currently owned a Dyson Purifier. Amazing, call that head up really quick, I love that. Um, and I guess this has very similar functionality in terms of the fan speed. So if you don't know, the remote control does magnet on top of the product, which is super handy. But what we generally prefer is having the machine into an auto mode so it intelligently adapts to the pollution events. But if you want to manually customize it, you can adjust the fan speed all the way up to 10. Now, in saying that, this is as loud as the product is gonna get. Well, I should put it in forward mode, that <laughs> makes sense. Um, so this is as loud as the machine's gonna get from a decibel perspective. Obviously, you have that powerful airflow projection. It's being amplified through the loop and projected out through the front. No buffeting, no blades. It's really safe, um, but really powerful cooling effect from the velocity of the air. But this is giving you the highest purification rate. But what James also meant by diffuse mode is if we push this button, a valve will change in the back of the machine, the airflow will stop projecting from the front. So you're getting effective purification, but you're also getting a diffused airflow. So you can continue to purify in a nursery, in an office, wherever it might be, without feeling the powerful airflow. Um, so that's a really great feature option as well. In addition to that, what this purifier is aimed at, it's our top of the line model. And the reason that is, is because it's our hot plus cool. So not only does it project um, a high velocity of air to cool you, it also has heating elements. Um, so temperature coefficient heating elements in here. They're really safe, um, but they're in really fast to heat up. They, they hold their heat very well, but this just enables this machine to be that all year round solution. Okay, um, so also in addition to that, it obviously has safety features and an intelligent thermostat. So if it is in a room with young bubs and children or even yourself, it's going to make sure that the temperature stays regulated through the evening. Um, and if the machine is knocked over, it does switch off as a safety mechanism, which is super important um, if we want to have it in a room and protect the safety of others. So I guess that essentially takes you through how the machine's projecting. The other piece that's important about this product, majority of other machines, even our previous generation, they would only have a 70 degree of oscillation. So this machine has four different customizable options, either off 45 degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, or 350 degrees of oscillation, which essentially means it's gonna allow that powerful projected air to reach every corner of the room. Now this new system also is a clutch system. So our previous generation, you'd either have to just sit there and pause it when it gets to the spot that you want. So now it's almost like a clutch. So 
so you can actually angle it wherever you like. And what's unique to this version of the product, you can also tilt it forward and tilt it back depending on where the machine's um, ideally placed in your room. So in terms of placement, this machine is perfect to be placed in the corner of the room. It doesn't necessarily have to be in the center to achieve the effective purification. Um, and it has the ability to clean a whole room properly, um, which is incredible. So there's a couple of other features we'll go through and then let's just get hands on and you guys can experience the technology for yourself. Did the previous yes, generation um, turn off if it fell over? Yes, it did. We always had that safety precaution in all of our heating cool fans. Yeah, uh, cool. So what I'll do, I'll move back over to James and he's just gonna talk through the last key video here, which is all about the Dyson difference in terms of testing and what competitors do versus the standard we hold our machines to. Over to you, James. Thanks again, George. Um, so yeah, uh, we've just seen some active demos of George. Um, I wanted to talk you through you know, how we test this um, in our engineering labs. Um, so the video playing now shows the industry standard test. Um, it's conducted in small chambers with a ceiling fan and only one sensor. So this is called the CADR test. Um, but in our opinion, it's not representative of like a real life space where a purifier may exist. So I'm essentially going to be on the industry tests. Um, and in the video that you're watching now, you will see a uh, kind of uh, virtual interaction with something called the test. Now this is based on a much larger representative room size of 27 meters square and has no added ceiling fan. So eight sensors are placed in the corners of the room. Um, and um, one sensor in the middle of the room. Um, and we've used this method to engineer the Dyson Pure Power Light Machine, um, as we believe it's really important to deliver a uniform cleaning performance throughout the whole room. Incredible. So, just to recap before we move over to experience, um, again, this technology is really the epitome of the evolution and pioneering spirit of our engineers in terms of creating a cleaner home environment. The latest features of this product, of course, it is that all year round solution, but it has a couple of key new features. It's that solid state formaldehyde, sen solid state formaldehyde sensor. It's the first of its kind in our products, which is complemented by a new catalytic oxidization filter, which destroys formaldehyde, which we know can continue to off gas for years and be very difficult to capture. And then in addition to that, we've not only combined, created new combination filters, but we've now achieved the machine by completely sealing it to ensure it has a HEPA 13 standard whole machine sealed filtration and then of course the additional features in terms of projection customizable fan speed and that oscillation to project either cooled air or warm air throughout the whole year and across the whole room to purify it effectively so keep in mind that this product of course is under embargo until the 22nd of March but it will be released into Australia on the 29th of March available for consumers to purchase. So I guess without further ado we'll have an opportunity to ask some questions but I'd ask you to follow me through because I have some really great demonstrations and perhaps an opportunity for you to shoot some content with um, the demonstrations that we have there for you. So follow me through. So we're moving you through to our set here. Now we've created a couple of in-situation room sets. The first one here is indicative of a home office and then we have a, a, just a generalised living area space here. But what I'd like to do is draw your attention over to this fixture. This was actually the backpack in that study video, so one of the prototypes. So this is where the air quality sensors sit and they follow along across the journey throughout the day. So this was what feeding back all that information that our microbiologists and scientists were able to tell um, our local influencer exactly what they were exposed to in their home and on their journey. But then the tech inside that then brings it here to show off really how reactive um, or how sensitive our, um, our sensors are at detecting different types of pollutants, but also how it makes the invisible visible and instantly reacts. So what I have here on the actual machine itself, these are where the, the sensors are actually located on the side of the product, and they're actually labeled. I like to call them nostrils. It's not a very engineering term, but this is kind of where the sensors live and they detect all that pollution. Um, so if it was sitting in its automatic mode on the LCD screen, it actually has a real-time graph 
tell you really what the air quality is through a color representation um, graph there. So I'm gonna do two different types of pollution events. One will be paper. Now we know this isn't necessarily harmful to us, but this actually releases microscopic ultrafine particles when it's torn. So this is how sensitive the filters are at detecting invisible pollutants. So I'd ask you to keep an eye on the actual screen here and tell me if the graph starts to spike as I'm tearing this paper, to which you cannot see um, any of the particles that are flying off this paper, but the machine's making the invisible visible. And what it's doing, you can see it completely spike up, and then it's telling us it's PM 2.5, so they're that well calibrated, it detects that it's particle matter, and then tells me how much in microns is in the air right now. So obviously a very low concentration because I've just torn a couple of pieces of paper, but that is just how much control you have of understanding what pollutants are in the environment that this machine is in. The second demonstration is to help represent volatile organic compounds. So this machine should have been in auto, and that's why it had it reacted. So if I pop it into its auto mode, what this is gonna do is allow it to react. So then if we push some hand sanitizer, we know this is great, it's sterilizing, we use this every day, but there are chemicals in here um, that the machine will detect as a volatile organic compound. So as I wave my hands up, you can see it's completely spiked all the way up to the top. And then what's gonna happen is it's gonna tell you exactly what compound it is. And the machine's gonna automatically adjust its fan speed to capture as much of that pollution as possible, which is really unique and incredible. So that's in terms of our filtrate, uh, how our sensors have calibrated. Obviously, I didn't want to bring any sources of formaldehyde in here, um, so we're just doing some safe demonstrations, of course. Um, but this is something you can engage with after if you want to make the machine react. Um, so what we'll do, let me move you over to this next section, um, so you can actually see kind of what you have to So here again, you know, we can thank Tom for this one. He's got our engineers to laser cut some machines for us. This is really unique. We love when we get, um, you know, cutaways and these incredible things to be able to look inside. The, it's almost like looking inside the mind of the engineers. It's amazing. Um, so this filter here is a cutaway of our combination filter. So it's really just, if you want to have a tactile touch, just remember the HEPA layer here is really a microfiber, borosilicate fiber, really high quality HEPA media, but this is what captures all the particle matter. So all the dust, the pollen, um, the bacteria, the mold spores all get caught in this stage. Then the gases that pass through that HEPA layer then get captured, and this is also for odors, gaseous substances, those volatile organic compounds, they're all captured within the carbon granules embedded inside this layer. So how, how did the unit capture formaldehyde before? This one breaks it down. Yeah, so to answer that question, the previous generation of machines, formaldehyde is a very complex um, pollutant. Now, formaldehyde is obviously very small, but the way we were able to capture certain amounts of formaldehyde in the previous generation was because formaldehyde molecules were attaching to particulate matter mo molecules and merging themselves with other volatile organic compounds. So those microscopic, um, I guess, uh, amounts of formaldehyde that were merging with particle matter, as it's merged with the particle matter, it's being captured in the stage of the particle. But if it's formaldehyde in its purest form, where it's not fusing itself with other particulates, it was escaping back into the environment. Hence the need for this new catalytic filter, which is the perfect segue for Alex, um, into this lifetime filter, because this is where the magic happens inside here in terms of the formaldehyde passing through, being broken down and converted back um, into um, that molecule and through combustion and then re-oxidized. So this filter never needs to be replaced, which is a great um, feature. Now, I guess in terms of the cutaway here, it's just a physical representation if you did want to correlate it to some of the critical touch points. But James did mention this too, but it is a fun little moment to have if you push the button, it'll actually highlight all those critical points that our engineers almost took that forensic approach with to ensure that it's sealed. Um, another great thing that you get to see in this cutaway in particular is the actual heating elements in the product. So a lot of people don't necessarily know where they're housed, but they actually sit with inside the amp. So as the pressurized air, as the air comes through the filters, through the machine, it passes and pressurizes through the amp and the loop, in turn going through these heating elements before it projects out into the air. Um, so yes, I guess there are some demonstrations there for you. The other one, I'd like, oh, one sec. Uh, I was oh, gonna yeah. say, did, did, the, did the, um, 
designers know that formaldehyde was something they had to tackle and, and they hadn't invented the uh, catalytic filter yet or was it something that they figured out afterwards? I think that's a great question and you know what to be honest I, I, I fundamentally believe that they tackle one thing at a time mm. so I think it's almost like understanding the spectrum of pollutants and with the technology we have at the moment what can we do with the best we can to capture as much as we can and I think if you keep in mind a lot of these machines are in development many years before mm. they're actually here in a secret briefing months before it's actually being launched um, so I, I almost believe it is most definitely something that was thought of um, or the idea to be able to destroy formaldehyde was really um, a byproduct of the learnings from the first generation of purifiers that we had um, but it's really cool to be able to say we destroy formaldehyde, which is awesome. And thank you for asking that question. One other thing I'd like to share through, we've really talked about some of the key core tech, but if you follow me just over to this home office set and turn around, the one thing I really love about our latest generation of purifiers is that really tying into that connectivity element. So, hey Google, turn on office purifier, please. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Turning on office so now we can completely activate the machine hands-free. So this will come in handy whether we've already jumped into bed and we've left the remote on top of the machine, we can turn it off, or also it comes in really handy when we're cooking and we want to remove those odors and we might have our hands full with other things, we can completely voice activate and control the is, machine. Is that just new to that device or mm -hmm. can you, will all the units get it through an app upgrade? Every single unit now will be able to connect to Google yeah. Home and Amazon Alexa. So it's more of a software update that's been pushed to the existing generation of machines but we've ensured that is really something that obviously comes out of the box with these latest machines. Um, so just stay there for one second because the other thing I want to bring is the iPad. So even though we can voice connect it, what also is incredible is this is a feature that I never want to underplay because I fundamentally believe anyone that owns one of these purifiers should utilize the Dyson Link app. And this is a free download from the Apple Store or the Google Play Store. And once you download the application, you just create a Dyson account. Um, it will take you under a minute to create one. And then at that point, you'll be able to connect any Dyson connected product to your home or to your in your home to your application. So what we've done, we've connected this machine up earlier and all you need is your home Wi-Fi connection. Um, and then literally, I now can view the outdoor air quality and weather before I leave my home. And in here is actually the air quality in the space where the purifier is at that moment. What I can also do, if you watch the screen, is completely control the machine, of course, through the remote control. So because this is connected at home with Wi-Fi, this is the perfect group to talk to this about because if you're ever out and about, you can completely remotely control your machine from wherever you are anywhere in the world as long as that's at home connected to wi-fi so i'm going to turn it back on it's instantly going to react but then what i can also do is get fully functional controls in the remote so then i can ask the machine to start to oscillate i can create a sleep timer but then what i what what's also what what it also gives you is full control in terms of air quality data and reporting so if i slide up i then get a breakdown report on the types of pollutants, so I can break down on PM 2.5, PM 10, NO2, VOCs, and break that down by daily, weekly, and monthly. And I can see exactly through a visual graph how much pollutant, how much pollution is entering my home or my space, when, what time in the day, so then you can create a custom schedule for your machine to turn on and off when you wish, you can manually control it, but if you're someone who really wants to know the ins and outs of what's happening, the application's gonna tell you that. And there's a really user-friendly scale that's gonna be able to tell you and break down exactly what each and everything means in the application. So it really helps those who um, aren't experts in air to become an expert in air by understanding um, our explanation and our data. So I just wanted to showcase some of those extra features but now's a chance for you to muck around and have a go and we'll be around to answer any questions as you wish. <coughs> oh actually one other thing is this is how responsive the app is. I've um, been wanting to do this one all day um, so I'm glad I get to do it with you both. So if I hold this here if I then create a pollution event with the machine and just wave this around the product what will happen is it should react Oh, well, 
Google's that they react and they hit the sensors right. Anyway, when the machine senses and reacts to this pollution event, it is going to then respond back onto the screen. So one other thing to mention is, obviously because this is a secret briefing, a lot of these products are pre-production. So when they do come in May, they're gonna be the complete production versions. But in saying that, um, you might notice a slight different color change in this product and also that it is a tower machine. Um, so what we've also done from a consumer perspective, we've also launched um, two additional models within the range. So we have the Dyson Pure Hot Plus Cool Formaldehyde that I took you through in the presentation, that's the top of the line. We then have a Dyson Hot Plus Cool Purifier um, and that essentially has a couple of key upgrades. So it doesn't have the formaldehyde um, catalytic filter, so it can't destroy formaldehyde. But what it does have is the new combination filters and the HEPA standard sealing filtration. But then in the tower version, we've also made available, this machine has the new combination filter out of that 25% recycled material. Um, it also has the new HEPA standard filtration sealing. Um, but this uniquely has one benefit over the others, and this is now 20% quieter than its previous tower. So this is the perfect machine, and this is the loudest the machine's gonna get in fan speed 10. So with that power- They just have the if They don't have the- so just the one hot cool yeah, so one more. Correct, yeah. so there's two hot and cool versions, one of them with the solid state sensor and the formaldehyde filter, and one of them that doesn't have the solid state sensor and the formaldehyde filter, but it, or, but it maintains, it, it also has the combination filter and the fully sealed um, system with all those critical points as that chart was. Is the formaldehyde one, the smaller one, quieter as well, or only this one? It's only this one, because remembering the hot and cool version has those heating elements in them, right? So because there are no heating elements inside the amp here, the engineers were able to sort of re-engineer how the air flows through it. So being less turbulent in turn creates less noise. Um, and that's really a unique proposition for the tower. And remembering with a purifier, it's really not about one purifier for the whole home. Essentially, it's about the rooms and not the home. So you'd want either something like this in you know, your living room or an open plan you know, living room kitchen, and then perhaps a hot and cool functionality in the bedroom or vice versa. Maybe this is the one that's sitting in the bedroom and you have your um, hot and cool formaldehyde sitting in the living spaces. Um, so yeah, that's a really, I guess top line overview of some of the functionality changes, but are there any questions while I'm in the hot seat? <laughs> yeah? Hey, yeah? Is the formaldehyde such a thing that customers know about, or is it, is, is it something that you're going to have to educate customers that, for them to know they need it? Yeah, that's a great question. Yeah, most definitely. I think with anything when it comes to air, um, uh, air pollution and awareness around air quality, we still have a big job to do. Um, but what we're really proud of is we've kind of led We've, we've essentially pioneered that, especially here in Australia as well, in driving that education. But again, here, a lot of consumers focus on like the seasonality elements of these products, where it really is now shifting that awareness to this very well is a fan and it has cooling properties, to, but the main benefit of this in your home is that it will purify effectively, you know, as opposed to being a fan first, we want it to be a purifier first, right? But to answer your question, awareness of formaldehyde really is quite low so this is a big job for it's us the the it is it's and you know others would exactly and others would probably steer away from talking about that because they're unable to capture it or do it, anything with it. there's a whole range of formaldehyde air purifiers coming out of china right as we speak okay understood yeah. it's, it's a new category yeah, yeah. How, um, how big is the formaldehyde range <coughs> in terms of ingested what's the health Look, it's, it's a hard one to answer, obviously, you know, me not being a specialist or, you know, in the medical profession, but what we do know in terms of effects is general pollution in general, the more you're exposed to can have what we've identified, more respiratory um, effects in terms of those um, very similar to kind of allergic reactions, having those itchy nose, um, you know, itchy throat, um, and potentially even causing some sort of like allergic rhinitis. Um, but look, I would, if I could pose that back to you, if there was a Google search on formaldehyde, you might be able to see some more spe specific um, statistics around the health impacts of formaldehyde, yeah. but I'm not in a position to be able to share 
But, but also, yeah, I heard you tell, explain a story where you bought all this new stuff for your apartment, yeah. and you had the previous version of this filter, and yeah. it was going full bore because of all the ex, of all the gases being emitted. You want to just totally. No, I'm happy to share that story. It doesn't probably necessarily answer your question in full, but to answer it, like any exposure to anything that's bad for us, high amounts of it can have multiple different effects. But for now, we're comfortable just sharing that it has effects in terms of respiratory issues, in terms of itchy eyes and noses, but depending on your environment that you're in, if you're exposed to a high amount, it can have more adverse effects. So if I could answer that by doing a little bit of research in terms of scoop formaldehyde yourself, you can actually look at some probably more scientific information around the effects of it. In the US, um, by the way, it is oh, yeah. So he's actually done a white paper on formaldehyde and its, and its health, imp uh, health impacts. So very happy if anyone would like to have a conversation with him, we can set up an interview, get any quotes as well. So yeah. Um, on this, that story, I think what I had the previous generation, this exact tower, but the earlier version. Um, but before I knew myself much about formaldehyde, I had recently moved into a new apartment. I had changed the flooring, I bought a lounge, I bought a rug, I was like, yep, yeah, living my best life, buying some new furniture, and then what I noticed was my purifier was actually sitting in a severe state for nearly over a week, and to the point where I thought, is there something going on with my purifier, what's happening? Um, and what we found was, is that it was literally a VOC reading, sitting severe for a whole week straight, and that was literally the week that I unpacked everything and set it up, because I'm one of those people that like, as soon as I unbox it, I want it all set up, ready to go. I'm not I mean, it's like the Newcastle smell, right? Except it was yeah, a new furniture smell. most definitely. And like, I, I smelt that, and I didn't correlate it and associate it with uh, potentially any effects. Like, <laughs> I'm already on to that with James, say it. We're gonna send all this back to James after the engineer said it back. Um, so yeah, it's, it's really the things that we don't know what we don't know, right? And we're conditioned to new car smell or new furniture smell, right? But really, we're breathing a whole bunch of chemicals and formaldehyde that can have um, effects on our health. Excellent. Any other questions? You mentioned dates. 22nd of March is the arrival. Mm -hmm. And 29th of March on sale or May? 29th of May, May. sorry. May. May. Mm -hmm. uh, so we wanted to get you guys in the That's why I said it's months. Yes, exactly. Because yeah. you said March before and it was like, it's only a week. Yeah, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. yes, you can talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm 22nd of March, yeah. March, but there will be nothing for anyone to buy until May. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that's really, you know, it comes down to every market really seeing the importance of this and making sure there's enough stock. And the logistics are the slowest I've ever been. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, well, if there aren't any other questions, feel free to engage, enjoy, and answer any questions or do as you wish. <laughs> Thank you.